Hi everyone, Linda here from the Scrapbooking Photographer. I'm here today to join in on the Hop for Mix It Up Monday, which is run by Peace Craft Love Clubhouse, and in particular Anna Arvich, and also Tara O'Rourke does a lot of the organising for us. So shout out to both of them. Uh, because it's a hop, there will be lots of videos for you to watch. So I do recommend that you watch them all to get inspiration and everybody's take on our challenge. Now, looking at our challenge this month, we are given a sketch to follow. And this is this month's sketch. And the idea is to mix it up. So combining traditional scrapbooking with some mixed media and uh, other things. So the first thing that I noticed was the circle and to my mind came a thing that I had cut out some time ago on my Cricut machine which had paw prints in it. Whoops, don't want to break it now. It's been in the in the box for quite some time, keeping nice and flat. It's not a straight circle, it does have the paw prints in it, but hey, that's mixing it up, right? So I really wanted to use that. So then I went in search of some photos, and I know we only need one for this layout, and the one I chose is this one. Now this is my youngest dog, Gracie. I have three of these golden retrievers, and she is my youngest. Um, and this was, she was about one year old, she's three now. Uh, and she just loves these big tennis balls. Every Christmas she gets one under the tree and she loves playing soccer with them out in the backyard until she puts her teeth through it and then they have to go in the bin. So this is the photo I'm going to use and there are a few others from playing out in the backyard which I will be able to put on a companion page on the opposite side. So I'll put those other photos to one side. Now every dog we have has a different colour code that goes with them and her collar is black so I'm happy to bring in a little bit of black which I thought I might use on the frames and also I have these die cuts which are black from the Dream Maker set. I'm also going to use uh, this text stamp from the Dream Maker set to provide the text behind things. The papers I found are from the Cossette range which I just think the I was looking for something that had yellow and green to go with the photos so these are the ones that I'm going to coordinate with so we're going to start with the distress oxides now the distress oxides are an interesting thing I love using them and mixing them with water and coming up with different colors I did have a little try before I started today and this was the mustard seed on its own mixed with a little bit of water. Now I just felt that that was a little bit too bright uh, to go behind our circle so I mixed it with a little bit of brushed corduroy and it just toned it down a little bit. So what I want to do first up is do a sponged circle behind that just to give it something to sit on. So I'm going to do that first and then let it dry. So to start with, I'm just going to put a little pencil drawing underneath where this is going to go, just kind of roughly in a circle, because it's going to be very rough underneath it, which is what I want. So first up, I'll mix a little bit of mustard seed and a little bit of brushed corduroy and spray them both with water before mixing them together with my sponge. Now I usually get a sponge, a whole sponge, and cut it into about eight pieces, which makes it go a lot further. And I find that the sponge gives me a little bit more control over where um, the ink goes. And I need some control here because I want that sort of circular pattern. When that lot of ink had run out, I just tried the paw print circle and felt it needed a little more so I redid the same process with the mustard seed and the brushed corduroy and this time as I went around I feathered some around the outside as well just to make it look like the yellow circle is fading into the background and then clean up with a wet wipe and a paper towel. So while that's drying I'm just going to take a little bit off the top and bottom of this photo and using the ruler on the bottom of the trimmer, I can see where a cut's going to be if I make it a certain distance. So I've made it five inches long, 
keeping it four inches wide. And you can see in the sketch that the frames around it need to be slightly longer. So I'm using the black cardstock on the trimmer and have cut a piece four and a quarter inches wide. So I've then cut it in half so they are six inches long and just measuring it on the trimmer so that the blade comes in an eighth of an inch, I'm going between the top and the bottom, leaving uh, a, oh, about half an inch attached at each end. So you'll note in the sketch that the top and bottom of the frames are slightly longer than the width on the sides, so that's what I'm trying to copy here. And if I can go round and measure it uh, exactly this middle piece just pops out so I'll go away and make another one exactly the same coming back to the sketch I've got my two frames and when I put the photo on top I just feel it needs a little bit more off the top so I just go and trim a little bit more off and when it comes back uh, um, I think it fits much better so that's all ready to go now the inks dry on our base piece I'll put the circle in just to see what it looks like and the photo in where I want it to go and marked it so that when I put the text stamp in I know where to stamp it. I've turned the verse mat over so I'm stamping on the sponge side and I'm going to bring in a piece of scrap paper just to see if I want to do a primary stamp or a secondary stamp when I put it on the page. And it's a close run thing, I'm not really sure, but I think I'm going to start behind the photo with the primary stamp and uh, then I can change my mind without it causing too much damage. With this stamp from the Dream Maker set, it's actually waved in a way that you can line it up quite nicely next to each other and it fits quite well as a block of text stamping. So in the end I go ahead with the primary stamp and all the way along to the edge just potting that scrap paper underneath to catch any dregs on that side. And on the left hand side I notice in the sketch it's only got a portion of the stamp. So I take it off the block and just get the same section in to just do a portion of it. And then I look at it and realise it's crooked, which doesn't impress me very much at all, but I'm going to have to figure that out with the papers that I put in there. So it looks good with the photo, and then I'm going to play with the frames and see what they look like. And maybe it won't matter so much that the text is crooked. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in the papers, and I've got this gorgeous one with the yellow and green sprigs on it, and to help disguise the wonkiness of the text, I'm going to tear the edge of this paper. So if I bring one edge towards me, it gives me a white edge to it, which will blend into the background. And I'll just trim it a bit shorter and place it under there. Bringing the pine piece of paper in, it's square on all sides, and I've cut it to 10 inches by 1 inch. So it just provides a bit of a solid base to everything else. And then dry fitting uh, the frames in the photo and it's starting to take shape. To add a few extra little bits as per the sketch, I've got this little paw print and little heart from um, an old set of rainbow bridge stamps. So using pine and the paw print first, I'm just dotting a few in different places, uh, thinking that there will be little clusters in each corner of uh, different things. So a few pores here and there, and then I come in and do the same with the heart. And then on the outside of those, I'm bringing in that scrap paper so that I can stamp on it first and add some secondary stamping around the outside of what we've already done. So that's just getting lighter towards the edges. Funnily enough, I then realised that I've put some embellishments on without having stuck anything. So to make sure I get it all in the right place, I take a photo on my phone so that I can refer back to it. Because it's amazing how many times you can take things away and then go to stick them on and it never quite looks the same. 
but having that photo to refer back to means that at least you have a reference. So I'll go ahead and stick this down and while I'm doing that I'll just remind you that this is a hop and so it's really good to watch everybody's video and see their take on the sketch. I'm sure there'll be some interesting things to see. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody else's as well. You can see how having that photo on my phone is quite handy to refer to occasionally to get everything back in the right place. Um, the frames were quite um, tricky to get right but once the photo's in um, I'm happy we're back to where we were with the embellishments all done. So next is the title. The title of the page is going to be Football Fun. So I'm using the pennant alphabet to do football and then I'll do fun in another alphabet. So I did show the other day in my last video how to double up with letters uh, for spacing. So in football I need two O's together and two L's. So for spacing purposes I use the G for the second O and the E for the second L and then take them off before I stamp obviously. And so putting the word football in there, I know that there's enough room for the O to go in on the small stamp and the L to go in there at the end. For the word fun, I'm going to follow the line of the circle at the bottom and I'm using the marker alphabet. So again, turning the versamat over, I'll stamp the U at the bottom right in the center and then space the F and the N equal distance on either side. I'm using intense black as my ink colour and then I can turn it back over the other way and I'm just going to add a few little black hearts and stars just to add some more black around the edges. I do add, also add some hearts from that die cut sheet which you'll see in the close ups at the end. And now I'm just trimming a piece of plastic to cover the main circular part of the page so that I can use my fan brush and to do that I'm using pine ink mixed with some water in the lid of the ink pad and just tapping the, pine, the fan brush around the outside so that the drops fall off. It needs to be quite wet to get some decent drops and it just adds a little bit extra to the outside of the page. Just make sure that you clean the lid thoroughly before you put it back onto the ink pad. As a final touch, I'll just go round the outside with my blending brush and the pine ink just to give a little bit of an edge to that white daisy page. Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Perhaps it's enough for you to subscribe. I'd very much appreciate it. Happy crafting!